Okay. We've also had a special conversation with uh, the management at Concor with a 75% share of uh, the country's rail container transport business. They are going to be a beneficiary of the Atmanir permission. In fact, Aisha caught up with Mr. Kalyana Rama, the CMD, to understand the opportunity, how they plan to use their expansive network to capitalize on this initiative and also get an update on the much-awaited divestment. The urban urban Bharat should increase our exports more. Uh, the the export the competitiveness of Indian products will increase with this Atman Bar Bharat. As on date, more of primary products get exported from India rather than manufactured products. But now things started looking up. Uh, we hear that some mobile manufacturing is starting in India and something is shifting from other countries to India. So this will definitely increase the exports. So when the exports increase, like as on date, even in the lockdown period, as I said, when we were continuously working, see, we could see around 80 to 90% of the demand of last year's level, even in this lockdown period, even unlock started, the unlock one and two is not completely fully operational. Manufacturing units is still, or uh, it's only a very low key going on. But we are getting a lot of exports. And with the train running, it's got improved a little bit because of there is not much of load on the network on Indian railways as the passenger traffic is not happening now. So more and more exports are coming onto rail network and we are able to cater to that. We got the wherewithal to cater to a demand increase of another 100%. Sure. Okay, that, that's good to hear. So a positive uh, step in the right direction in that sense. But tell me the other big trigger for Concord is the government's divestment drive as well, uh, Mr. Rama. What is it going to mean for your leased land ho holdings, which are owned by railways? Uh, have the objections on the stake sale been cleared now? So there's no comment on my side because this is something which is a work in progress. So I can't give you even though I I will not tell you that I'm not in the know of the things, but I cannot comment on this. Okay, I was just trying to push my luck. <laughs> because, you know, the finance ministry, as we understand, does believe that instead of the land lease fee of 6% and an annual increment of 7% every year, uh, the Ministry of Railways should be more flexible. So just wanted to understand how big an overhang would you think the land license issue is going to be for the potential buyers? You see, land is the major asset and major in input for the logistics industry. So it's very essential to have the ICDs at strategic locations. So there is no doubt that the railway land, which we are now having after surrendering 17 locations in the first quarter, that is the last three months, after starting from April, these are very strategic locations. So there is discussions that there are discussions going on. Let the discussions be completed, and the the concerned department will definitely notify to the uh, one and all how the things are going to take up. Sure, you know because you, I understand that the finance ministry has also suggested long term land lease for twenty five to thirty years be given to the new buyers, and I'm guessing. Please correct me if I'm wrong here that this is going to be very important, longer lease for large business continuity. No comments from my side. So this, <laughs> I will not comment. You may try your luck, but you know, I can't comment on these things. The concern department is deeper. So they yeah. will be giving you the input. Uh, so let's not go further on this. <laughs> sure, sure. We're going to wait for the official comments. Uh, let's you know, switch tone of the discussion then. Domestic players, global port trust, various funds are interested to pick up a pie of container corporation. Just from your own perspective, someone who's at the helm of the company, what makes Container Corp such an interesting proposition? Yeah, it's a very interesting question. I will answer this question. See, sure. <laughs> let me tell you, around 30 years back, you know, when I was a uh, young a civil service officer entered the field and then working. So everybody was talking the sunrise industry is the IT industry. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm basically an engineer. 
but I moved on to civil services. So I used to feel, am I in the wrong side? I'm not in the sunrise industry, but today the sunrise industry is the largest fixed industry. Honorable Prime Minister, when we were talking of the revival of Indian economy, he said the major role will be played by the supply chain logistics. The country which will have its supply chain logistics in good shape and having the right mix of the supply chain logistics will definitely do well and the economy will be doing much better in the coming days. So we are in the right segment of the industry. That's why the interest in this. So as you look back, are you happy that you did not make the switch to IT? Obviously. So <laughs> that's why I, I, that made me to add this wonderful company for the last four years. Okay. Uh, wanted to understand during the COVID times, Mr. Rama, what's been your observation? Has the rail market share been higher in recent quarters because of uh, you know, greater COVID-led disruptions when it comes to road transport? And if so, how, how long do you really see this trend continue? Yes, there is, there is a shift from road to rail. There is increase in the rail cohesion. Not very high, but yes, compared to earlier times, there is definitely an increase in the rail cohesion. When I say rail cohesion, the more movement by rail. It's continuing now. Because of the, the, the problems still existing on the, the road sector, now it is time for us to consolidate. So I'm having my discussion with Indian Railway, my colleagues in Indian Railways, so how to uh, capitalize on this positive impact or in a negative time. So we are working on that. We are trying to come out with uh, some sort of incentive schemes, some special uh, packages to attract more and more onto the rail. So a, a positive step towards that is railway has announced some timetable running of freight trains for containers as well. So that will give a lot of boost for the export market because the, we are guaranteeing the delivery to the port. It's a very positive step. Yeah. Tell me what's the update on the dedicated freight corridor being partially commissioned and what is it going to meet, mean for your uh, rail operations overall? See, dedicated freight corridor as things stand now and as I understand, I think will be operational by the end of this calendar year or by the March, by the end of the financial year, definitely, mm -hmm. up to Palanpo. That means it will connect two ports, Mundra and Pipawa. JNPT, it will take some more time, but the connecting two ports, which are also contributing to a lot of container movement towards the north, that's, you know, in Delhi, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh areas. The advantage of dedicated freight corridor is the assured transit time of the container movement to port and from port. That's very important. Where we can assure the customers and we can tell them at what, what, what will be the transit time. This is one thing which is lacking today on Indian Railway Network. Yeah. Uh you know, the company has been on the receiving end of the license fee decisions. The railways has demanded a land license fee of about 76, 777 odd crore rupees for just two terminals in Delhi and the total land license fee for all terminals put together can be as much as perhaps a thousand crore rupees per annum. Has there been any sort of middle ground which has been reached? And how exactly do you plan to absorb these costs going forward? You see, for this, I already given clarification in my conference calls with the investors. We did a calculation as per the circulars in Vogue when we calculated the land license fee is going to be around 450 crores. So we represented to the Minister of Railways and the discussions are going on. The clarifications have to come. So now as per our calculation, the land license fee liability on for this financial year will be around 450 crores. Let's see what, what uh, we will be able to come out with the Minister of Railways in the discussions. Sure. You continue to remain very positive, uh, Mr. Rama, about the long-term business outlook and have continued to invest in expanding your infrastructure while sustaining a lean balance sheet, I must add. Uh, tell us how exactly have you managed to pull this through and what have been the key investments 
that you've made off late pre-COVID? Oh, pre-COVID, we were, we were trying to expand our network. We, we were trying to build multimodal logistic parks. One across on the uh, alongside the dedicated freight corridor. We developed a, uh, one in a Katuas, which is already operational, and we are trying to build another two, three terminals on the western dedicated freight corridor. And also we are trying to connect the eastern part well with our network. See, our positive outlook is basically depending on our service quality levels. We have improved our service quality quite well in the last four years, and we work towards more of digitization. Our company is, uh, today I can claim almost 80 to 90% digitized. We are a complete paperless office. We completely work through ERPs. And in fact, we are working on some uh, artificial intelligence systems, wherein a customer experience will be completely, it's a, it's, it's a uh, artificial intelligence based uh, pre-productive analysis will be given to the customer and he can have complete transparency in his dealings. So that uh, I'm, we are very hopeful as a team conquer that we will be able to pull up our market share and we can create a lot of demand in this logistics sector.